SpaceX is in a rush to upgrade everything at its Starbase facility in Texas for a flight that CEO Elon Musk has been promising for over six years, Starship's first trip to orbit. A company executive has declared that this is an event you won't want to miss. Last week at the Space Mobility Conference in Orlando, Florida, Gary Henry, SpaceX National Security Space Solutions Senior Director, informed the audience that they should expect some must-see TV in March. So let's see how close the flight is to us on today's episode of Great SpaceX and find out if Elon Musk's six-year-long dream will finally come true. After a year of rigorous testing at the launch site, including multiple trips back to the production site for repairs and upgrades, Booster 7 is now mounted on the Orbital Launch Mount, or the OLM, for the final preparations before its launch. With anticipation and excitement, the team hopes that this will be the last step before the launch of Booster 7. After the huge test, it received a new hydraulic power unit on its south side, while the HPU on the north side was removed. But on February 25th, they replaced the second HPU cover going on the backside of B7. Just as interestingly, do you think these HPUs look like the Cybertruck? Well, anyways, there's no indication that SpaceX will conduct another test with Booster 7 prior to its orbital flight. Meanwhile, Ship 24 remains in the Rocket Garden, and it's unclear if its tiles are fully installed. Following this, Ship 24 will be transported back to the launch pad and reattached to Booster 7. SpaceX may opt to perform a wet dress rehearsal or a static fire with the fully stacked Starship, but they may also decide that further testing is unnecessary. And all eyes will certainly be on Stage Zero as well. SpaceX's chief designer Elon Musk has previously noted that Stage Zero is more complex than the actual rocket. Indeed, the star-based launch complex appears to be in the middle of a labor surge right now, and the highlight of the past weeks has been OLM. Installation of new shielding on the orbital launch mount began in the middle of last month. The outer shielding of the orbital launch mount is nearing completion now, and is resting besides the shield near BQD. Those final panels are expected to go on the OLM these next few days, and that task will likely need to be completed before the launch attempt. We are awaiting one more OLIT cladding to go up as well. In the meantime, SpaceX is already installing a water deluge system that will eventually make its South Texas Starship launch site much more capable of withstanding the stress of Starship tests and launches. This week, we observed the panel with various gauges and valves, which is likely a deluge system control panel. Installing the system and constructing a large enough water supply would take months, thus precluding a March launch attempt. This implies that SpaceX's first orbital Starship launch attempt will occur without the deluge system. The most critical component of that flight is the Starship engine, Raptor 2. SpaceX is continually refining and improving this engine day by day, pushing the boundaries of what is possible in space exploration. Recently, SpaceX fitted larger tanks to support longer Raptor engine firings, culminating in a record-breaking 194-second firing on the tripod test stand. Unfortunately, this success was preceded by a spectacular explosion during a recent test, joining a long series of similar incidents at Elon Musk's space travel company. As NASA spaceflight explains in the video of the explosion, the green flash of light that occurred is generally indicative of the engine eating into its copper sections, known in the spaceflight world as a rapid unscheduled disassembly, or an RUD. While these explosions may seem to be par for the SpaceX course, they are still incredibly expensive. The company lost upwards of $260 million in 2015 when one of its Falcon 9 spacecraft blew up shortly after liftoff. A 2016 Falcon 9 explosion annoyed Musk so much that the company investigated whether sabotage might have been to blame. And that's without delving into the various failures of its Falcon 1 prototypes, or the catastrophic explosion of an early Crew Dragon module before it had sent any astronauts to space. Needless to say, it's much better for explosions to occur during test firings rather than during actual launches. 
And even when they do explode at inopportune times, Musk often insists that the data the company collects from the mishap is worth it to upgrade to a better job next time. All in all, the strongest sign that Starship's first orbital launch attempt is imminent will be Ship 24's return to the pad and reinstallation atop Booster 7, as well as SpaceX's receipt of an FAA launch license. With testing mostly behind SpaceX, that license to launch may now be the biggest source of uncertainty for Starship's orbital class debut. If, as Gary Henry has indicated, there are no major hurdles standing in the way of the FAA license, Starship could be ready to launch in a matter of weeks. As a noteworthy update, SpaceX and NASA recently launched a new team of astronauts on a mission to the International Space Station, commencing a six-month journey in the great unknown. This momentous event marks a significant milestone in the history of space exploration as the astronauts embark on a remarkable journey of discovery and exploration. Wow, what a beautiful launch, Kathy Luters, NASA's human spaceflight chief, said in a news conference on Thursday morning, about two hours after liftoff. We've been really enjoying the night sky with the Venus-Jupiter conjunction, she added. And, and somebody mentioned to me that we added a bright new star to that night sky tonight. That's not to suggest that the launch was flawless, however. For example, Crew 6's Dragon Capsule, a vehicle named Endeavor, experienced a minor issue shortly after separating from the Falcon 9's upper stage. A sensor associated with one of the six hooks that open Endeavor's protective nose cone after it reaches space returned an anomalous reading causing the capsule to switch over to a backup system. The backup worked as designed, and the nose cone opened on schedule. Those six nose cone hooks are also part of a 12-hook system that Endeavor will use to dock with the ISS, which the capsule is expected to do on Friday, March 3rd. But analyses indicate that the potentially anomalous sensor won't be a problem going forward, said Benji Reed, Senior Director of SpaceX's Human Spaceflight Program. Also, Crew-6 was originally supposed to launch on Monday morning, February 27th, but the attempt was scrubbed late in the countdown after teams noticed a ground system issue. Specifically, they couldn't confirm that the Falcon 9 had access to a full load of triethyl aluminium triethyl boron, or TTEB, a highly combustible fluid that helps the rocket's nine first-stage Merlin engines ignite at the right time. Analyses soon revealed that the TTEB issue was caused by a clogged filter, Reed said. The launch team replaced the filter, and that solved the problem. As its name suggests, Crew-6 is the sixth operational crewed mission that SpaceX has conducted for NASA, and that tally doesn't count Demo-2, a test flight that launched agency astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley toward the ISS on May 30th of 2020. Looters remarked on the one-year anniversary of Demo-1, noting that it has prompted some introspection. In the past three years, SpaceX has achieved an impressive seven crewed missions, she said. In fact, SpaceX's total number of crewed missions is even higher, having launched Launched, having launched two private astronaut flights to Earth orbit, the Free Flying Inspiration 4 in September 2021 and the AX-1 mission to the International Space Station in April of 2022. This is a testament to the incredible progress and hard work of the SpaceX team. That's all the information we have for you today. If you appreciate the work my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you next time.